What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of the Gell's Nest. As always, ID84 here in my trusty sidekick, Adam the Mallet. Hey, what's up? What's up, Gell's World? How's everyone doing today? Uh, so, basically, if you're watching this episode, the Hall of Fame has already happened, coming and gone. It was last weekend. Mm-hmm. And um, they, the Gell's had brought in, uh, what did they bring in? One, two, three. Like six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven. Uh, yeah. new players, coaches, media guys this year. Yeah. Um, they had their big uh Hall of Fame inductee ceremony uh Friday, February 16th. Mm-hmm. And basically, in this episode, we wanted to kind of go through um the people who are inducted in and little information. If you go on, if you're watching this, obviously on YouTube, you can scroll down to the videos and check out um, all the um, tribute videos that they did on Friday night before they brought the guys up um, and get a little background of what they did. But we're pretty much going to kind of dissect that tonight yeah. and kind of go through um, basically their attributes and everything else. Uh, we might be joined by uh Mike Brazil, uh, who joined us last week, he might be popping in at some point. If not, we'll have him on um, on a later date when kind of go a little more in depth in the ceremony and all that stuff and how it ended up working out and how everything went. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't make it down there um, last weekend. But um, from what I understand, from what we've seen online, it was a blast. And it looked like everyone had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be pretty cool. Like, to, um, you know, you expect, look, because all these guys, we didn't play like one year, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole, this year's class was very interesting because you had, for example, uh, a guy like Nick Lima, who we'll be talking about first, who was a media guy who yeah, uh, pretty much just showed up one day when he was in high school and says, Hey, I just want to do play by play for you guys. And they're like, okay. And it, it was there for years from there. Um, yeah yeah i mean I, I was reading about him it's kind of it's kind of ballsy you know what yeah I mean? like he, right and he didn't know much he's kind of jumped into it you just know he kind of created a trademark with this, this fedora and his suit and um he just kind of yeah. went in all you know jumped right in yeah and then you had guys like coach uh coombs who we talked to a couple weeks ago on the podcast who was yeah, a really yeah. cool guy and uh his he, he, that got pretty in depth of some of the stories uh and the videos and well, and then you have a lot of the players who just played one season, maybe, maybe two, um, you know, some guys who are heading to the pros, some guys, this was it for them kind of thing. And, you know, it's very unique. And all these guys were playing in seasons. Well, the players at least, uh, that were pretty, you know, uh, you know, important for the girls. Cause they, I think a lot of them, they won the championship that year as well too. So these guys were like signature players who brought the team, to uh, new levels, a lot of them were hold- carrying the team too. Some uh, some aces and some some hell of a hitters that they had. So um, and that's basically what we want to talk about tonight. As always, um, like we said before, leave some comments below um, of these videos. And if you have any questions you want to ask or anything of that nature, uh, we will do our best to try to get you some answers and uh, bring some people on and uh, kind of go from there. This this beginning of the process is always is very slow yeah. trying to get going because it's it, honestly it, the most when baseball starts playing that's when all the the yeah. talk starts right i mean that is exactly when the talk starts yeah it's, right it, it, it's not like the gulls play a large in-depth major league season of like you know half the year that involves spring training and all that stuff like they literally play for you know two months basically two and a half months yeah. you know so we're trying to cram a year's worth of stuff that happened last summer and spread it out over the course of the off season. And um, I've already started trying to reach out to some players and some former players. And I've been going through the rosters over the years and hitting them up on Instagram and stuff and seeing if they want to come and just talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the, you know, what was life was like playing for the gals and what were like the whole situation was because from what we see on the outside, not being involved in everything, it, it the the whole the, it's a family of of people that come and go, but they all for, they all have a connection there forever, you know. Yeah, no, that's 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 very true. And as we go deeper into this, also as we kind of touched upon last week, once once the lineups start coming out, you and I can really start, you know, getting into who these players really are this year. You know, I'm excited about the lineups because I really would like to see. 
and compare some of the statistics of some of these guys. I want to see who the guys coming back. Uh, I want to see um, some of their college stats, what their lineup, where they are in college. A lot of these guys who made the Hall of Fame, some guys were their freshman year that came on the team, you know, and they were yeah. drafted out of high school. And that's a wonderful thing about baseball is because you could get drafted out of high school, just drafted. Like you could just be a really good fo- uh, baseball player. And then they just like, you know, the, you know, Minnesota Twins pick you 17th route, right? You know what I mean? Like, just just because like Tom Brady, right? Out of high school was a catcher. He was drafted to the, the Montreal Expos. Yeah. But and then you can say, Yeah, I'm not gonna go play for him and I can continue on. And then you, you just keep getting into you you don't have to enter yourself into the draft. They could just draft you. It's true. Pretty cool. Yeah, and it seems like too here that we have uh, there's quite a few players. I don't want to put a number on it, but at least at least, you know, three for sure that have had, you know, got, got drafted that played in minor, some minor league ball. Um Right. Right. So that's yeah. So we're going to go deal. through. Yeah, it is a big deal. I mean, it's, 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 it's all these, it's like anything else in sports, right? You just keep on playing and playing. You take every opportunity to play the sport to just get better and better and better at it. So you take advantage of these summer collegiate leagues because it's the downside between, you know, playing college ball, you know, then you play spring ball sometimes and that's the big one for college. And then there's some fall ball sometimes. And then, you know, winter you do some, in, you know, workouts, doing some batting cages and stuff like that. But the more you play, the better. It's like anything else. So, a lot of these guys take advantage of this because it's just the more you play, the better you're going to be. And the more people can see you and the more you're going to be able to fine tune your skills and stuff. And that's how it all yeah. starts at the end of the day. And um, but we're going to start and we're going to try to get through as many as we can this episode. And if we don't finish, we're just going to go and we'll continue this next episode um, next week. And uh, but we wanted to kind of highlight the guys who brought were brought in and kind of talk a little bit about them, because a lot of these guys you know, like we said, some made it to the majors. Um, some aren't even players. Some's the media guys. Some are coaches that once played in the majors. It's pretty impressive yeah. the resume. But no, it is, and I think people need to need to put it in perspective here too. Just how difficult it is. Like you, may, if you even made it a minor league ball, remember you're put in there already with the best of the best from everywhere. At every at every point. At, it was a point in time where everybody that was put into the minor leagues was told they were awesome. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's not like you any any bums were put in 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 the minor leagues. You know what I mean? So at one point, all these guys were told they were awesome, but they're put in there with other awesome people. And then the best of the best come out of that and they get weeded out. It, it is so hard to even make it to say, like, at, you know, the major league level for an appearance, let alone the minor leagues. Just know? think of the best guy you had at your high school. Right. And then think about the best guy that played in the division that your high school played in, right? So there's different levels there. He may have been the best guy in the division, yeah. knows, right? And then that guy, and then you compare that to every other divisions in the entire country, which is thousands of them through all school systems, private schools, uh, you know, public schools. I mean, you can add on and add on. And it's it's, it's funny because some schools produce like it's just a thing where they there's this a school I was watching a YouTube video uh, and they just produce like. D1 players like no one. They they produce more pros, whatever, but it's a, it's a private school. So you got to send your kids there. But their athletic facilities are absolutely amazing. I forget the name of the place. And it it it, it just literally you got to pay to send your kids there. Sports is like the number one priority. They focus on just, you know, fine tuning it. and then there's been so many draft picks out of all sports, men and women that have come out of the school. But you got to make that decision at some yeah. point, you know? And obviously it's a financial thing. If to put yourself in a situation like that with your family to be able to pay for a school like that, or do you just take your chance playing for a public school and hoping that someone's going to catch it? You know what I mean? Sometimes it happens, you know, sometimes it doesn't. And it's the luck of the draw. But so the first guy we want to talk about wasn't even a player in the team. He basically showed up one day and was like, hey, I want to do the play by play for the Gallus. And they let him, which is Awesome. And from what I understand, so his name is Nick Lima. He broadcasted for the Gulls from 2004 to 2016. Quite the run. Um, and from the story that they did in the introduction, uh, the uh, the tribute video, he was in high school. Kid shows up one day and goes, hey, I want to broadcast the play-by-play for the Gulls, right? So this is like 2006. So you got to remember that, uh, 2004, rather. you got to remember that the technology was primitive. You remember being in high school and you know, oh God, yeah, right? Yeah, yep. I, I was in film class, and yep, yeah. So he shows up. So the story has it. Um, Nick shows up, says he wants to do it. They said okay, 
and they kind of just didn't know what to expect, right? And he rolls up with like a like an old a beater car full of computer equipment and mixing equipment, right? And I seen a picture of it. It was actually pre- it was pretty impressive. There was a picture of like these old school computers with the towers and like monitors and stuff and like a really primitive mixer board. And he would he would, took it out. I think they were using it from the high school. I think he was doing this like he was still in yes. high school. He, they were yeah. borrowing the equipment from the high school to bring to the game and set up this. Now nowadays, right? We could do this. We could probably do it on a cell phone. Yeah. Or at least close to a cell phone of a few added devices. But this was a full-blown media system that they would bring hours before the game, set it all up, broadcast, and then break it all down and do it the next day. They didn't leave it there. It was there. Yeah, it was an old media center or something like that from like the uh, the 80s and 90s. It was already old mm-hmm. even then. Yeah. It was so cool. And that, for, for me, being like a media nerd, kind of thing and like technology nerd right i thought that was one of the, one of the cool coolest stories i heard um basically because like the dedication to do that like we've all done we've done this podcast uh, in some form or another um over the last like 15 years yeah and the, the technology has significantly changed since we started doing this in the first time right until yeah. now but like this was like a game like we talked to mike last week about th- what goes into what's involved in a a game broadcast right there's there's all these bells and whistles there's cameras this there's, there's audio there's uh you know setting things up scripts that have to be done different calls and whatever like that mm-hmm. so to be a couple of high school kids and like they used to call themselves the tiger sports crew and uh i guess he, i guess uh nick's brother worked with them for a little while too from what i understand um and they pioneered the broadcasting for the girls because i would imagine back in 2004 that there weren't a lot of teams broadcasting uh, games at all no, right no and if it was it was with like mom and dad's camcorder mm-hmm. yeah so he did all this in the in the in for years um put the team and for for free it's just volunteering just doing it because he like loved it right but i do like see so he had a his um uh, features picture of him right there was the with the door i love the fedora it was like a 1930s broadcast uh kind of a vibe going on right that he was going I, for. I, I'd, I'd like to know where, where he got that idea actually I, I love it i love the uh you know the sort of signature look i think it's a great idea you know? they, well they so they were, uh, during the uh tribute video um they were showing some clips of him doing play by play and he has like a he has a typical ro- roadie new england accent but he's he, but he was broadcasting like the old time. It's like go and deep bark into the soul. They were like, <laughs> like you know like that little like um twang they had back in the day of the old school yeah, broadcast. Yeah, nineteen twenty five. Yeah, it was exa- <laughs> it was, it, yeah. it was exactly like that, which was really really cool because like I think that's been lost in the art of uh, broadcasting a long time ago. So all right, it's right here. So Tigers two in late two thousand two, uh, Tiverton High School for a group of friends. He started originally mm-hmm. named the Baseball Broadcasting Club, a crew of uh of a. a Reboot of the school's long defunct THS video club. So this is basically a club he was involved with at school. And now I have yeah, one I have of my right here on my monitor. Yeah, yeah. one of my friends uh, from high school did this, and he's now he now broadcast out in Vegas, like doing the morning show out there. But he did the same exact thing. He started. He was in a club at like the local cable network. They would do stuff, and then he would be in like the school's club, like doing the stuff. And we were all like, wow, what's this kid doing? But I guess, you know, it's something to do, right? Yeah. It takes guts too. Right. You know, but, um, yeah. So it's, it's, it, it's pretty cool because he became like a, a Nick became like a figure of the team. Like it was part of the team, right? It was like furniture there. Like he was like, he would do the the on game. I would, which is very impressive. He did the pregame show when he would go and interview the coach and go out into the field and he get everything going, and then he would be out in the field for the post game, and you know, if the while if the microphone just just talking to everyone, getting some, it was a very, it was a production in which you would see these days in every single major league baseball post and pregame show. I would say, right? Yeah, which is a lot of work, especially for a bunch of kids in high school, you know, who aren't getting paid and just doing this because they love the game. But something impressive about him, which I was watching, um. Was that he he was really really good at broadcasting and the technical aspect of everything, 
but he didn't know much about baseball when he first started, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting. I, heard, I saw the video where uh, he thought it was a slider. And, yeah. And I was like, just about... <laughs> yeah. But it was so funny because, like, when you look into it, it's like, all right, so you just really wanted to be a broadcaster. And he, he probably had a love for baseball and just and it was learning along the way, which is cool. And by the time he was, he, he, he was done, it was pretty impressive that it, he was able to accumulate all this free knowledge, right? Yeah. Because you think, like, at the end of the day, this stuff is priceless. Being able to be on the field, being able to learn on the fly, be able to, like, someone allowing you to do something like that uh, with zero experience at all mm. is pretty impressive because that just leads you up to do, if this is something you want to do with your life at the end of the day for a career, it sets you up to a point where it's you're good to go, right, I would say? Yeah. No, it does. You would think, yeah, it's a good. It's definitely great for your resume. That's for sure. It's a nice yeah. jumping off point. Yeah, I would love to. Uh, I want to try to get him on the show because I'd love to yeah. talk to him to find out. I want to. I want him to come on and I want him to pretty much go from day one to the last day and talk to us about how he uh, the whole process went. Because I'm, I'm, it's, it's, I'm too, at the more I was reading about him and the more I was watching the videos and stuff, I was pretty intrigued by the whole. The the you just this just the drive to do this right yeah especially like, I'm more interested in his motive here too because like we said he didn't he didn't know so much about baseball but he wanted to broad he was broadcasting but it's like it was something that he wasn't very familiar with you know what I mean if you yeah. were, you know like you and I would would know how to kind of we, we haven't called the game but you know you and I would have some sort of inkling but he just kind of jumped into it without really knowing which is which is brave and it's just like I wonder why that was he bored was it would you want to know more about baseball like, yeah. yeah no it'd be great to have him on yeah. And his professionalism ism of the whole entire thing was just awesome. I mean, for for a kid that the suit, I mean, everything, everything, everything was yelling out when we, you and I have been the coolest town together, and we're yeah. walking through some of those exhibits of like the old school broadcasters, and they're all wearing the suits and they got the hats yep. on, and the, oh, oh yeah. we, you know, we're, they're all talking in the old thirties and forties, like that's it was like a time machine, and he, and he, he just did it. it. It's it's it was pretty cool, and he, he's about our age. Looking back, he was in high school around the same time we were in high school, so. Um, and and I was 17 years old. That's the last thing I'm thinking about is dressing up like an old school uh baseball uh reporter and yeah, kind of going off, true. right? You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, pretty cool. Still lives in uh Rhode Island, looks like, and uh, so you should be able to get him to come on with no problem. That'd be great. Yeah. Hopefully, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah. And I mean, how many years is that? That's uh 12 years of uh broadcasting. And how many championships they get in within that 12 years, which is pretty cool. You yeah, know, maybe so, was, she was the good luck charm. Could have been. You never know. You know, I, I think like we all done stuff. And when we have like that extra like pizzazz going on with it, right? Like, um, you know, like you could be doing like a club or you could be hanging out doing something. But like when you kind of have like a little bit extra flair to it, like there's music playing or you can, you know, it gets you kind of in the zone a little bit. Cause like baseball can be really, really redundant, right? It's a redundant sport. Like you get, you, you, and it's a very slow paced, you know, you only get up three times a game, you know, you're in the outfield. You, the, the, what, is it, what does the statistics say? The ball's only in action for like five and a half minutes for the entire something, game. Right. Right. Something, something like ridiculous that, yeah. like that. So, and especially when you're in these lower levels to have all this big league, pizzazz going on would really motivate myself i would say because i would be like oh there's walk-up music oh there's a pre-game interview there's a post-game interview that someone's doing play-by-play i, I could one of my friends could watch this on tv if they wanted to like yeah. you know what i mean like it's the little things that kind of add on to it like that they don't usually typically have right and i think for i don't know personally but for a lot of players i would think that would be something that you would look at and be like you know what that's pretty damn cool like they're yeah. They're running like a full blown major league situation over here by a bunch of high school kids, right? Who just kind of came in one day and decided to do this, right? And you know, here we are. We're 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 pioneering the uh, collegiate baseball uh, bucket. And like I said, a bunch of times already on the show, some of these things they do in the gulls is far and beyond that some minor league teams do. So, and they're getting funded by professional teams, right? So. That was a very interesting story. So we're going to try to work on getting uh, Nick Lima on the show. Um, Bumped. So who do we, uh, we turn to next? Well, I was going to mention when he was invited to the, he was invited to the ball, uh, the all-star game. 
and he took oh. bad practice at the All Star game. Oh, his, I saw that video. Yeah, his fedora, his suit, and everything yeah. like that. He hit so, one pitch. Yeah, so the, I guess they were throwing some heat at him, and then um, he finally chipped off a a little hit and he called it a day, which was pretty impressive. <laughs> I mean, because it, it'd be very tough for you and I to go out there and try to probably hit off some of these guys, right? Yeah, I mean, for sure. Especially uh, I'd be happy with, just to follow a tip, right? Make <laughs> a little contact would be uh, what it's at. You know what I mean? Um, so the next person I want to talk to, oh uh, yeah, talk to, talk about. We already talked to him. Was uh. Coombs, Coach Coombs. Coombs. Coach, I mean, he had stories just talking to us uh, a couple weeks ago when you brought him on the show. Um, but I didn't realize how much of a, uh, you know, like, like a, kind of a hothead he was out in the field sometimes. Did you see some of the, did you see that video at all that they were showing his? Uh, I, I did not actually. Now I got to go back and watch that one. So this guy, video. yeah. So he was promoted to, um, to, to manager after the current manager had left. Um, he was the pitching coach at the time, and um, he basically, from what I understand, after talking to him, after reading about him and watching some information, he was totally a player's coach. Like he was the type of guy that will tell you straight, have you, or he's the type of guy that will tell you straight, have your back, and uh, players first. Screw everyone else, kind of thing. I think you know that's the impression I get from what I've been seeing from. Him. Yeah, he he was great to talk to. I mean, he was like, uh, there was just no reason not to smile while talking to him. He was just fun right. to talk to. It was like, and you and I are suckers for baseball stories. We could probably listen to him until we, you know, forever. You know, and never yeah. be bored. We're at this. We're like already old in that. <laughs> yeah, <manner. laughs> yeah, and t- hearing him talk about some stories just. You know, but what he was doing when he was playing the minors and you know coaching the girls and stuff, I I I thought it was far beyond awesome and priceless to hear. Um, but you know, he, he having a coach that is player first, organization everything else second, I think is primarily important, especially in a developmental league like the collegiate league, in which you are. A player who is in that crisp in that gray area of am I going to continue with this after college or is this it for me? Um, and to get get you know he types he strikes me as the type that would just shoot it straight to you. You know what I mean? Kind of just yeah. be like, listen, if you didn't have it, he was going to tell you. If there's something he could do to get you there, he was going to tell you. He was going to like you know blow smoke up your ass and kind of you know lead you on thinking you know what i mean i don't think that's it coom is not the type of guy i think that's no something, you know what i mean and obviously players respond to that too i mean you look at his uh career regular season record like a 329 and 176 i mean yeah, that, that's good. more than just talent those are players that want to play for you you know and then at 44 and 17 uh postseason um so yeah you get players who want to play for you and you have talent on that team it just speaks for itself right there you're gonna win you know? Yeah, and you know, growing up, we have all, all have had coaches that kind of like, um, you know, we would play the sport and kind of just we remember, right? Just whether it's the way they treated the players in a positive manner, or kind of directed you in a way, or found that one attribute that was really, really good about you and kept you around. Like that's like a, a common Belichick story. Not not that baseball and football have a lot in common, other than me and sport, saying, but. Yeah. But he, Belichick would be the type of coach that would find something that you were really good at, right? If he liked you and he thought you were a good player and you got a good athlete, he would be like, this is what you got. Like Edelman, for example, you could talk about him, how he stayed around for so long. And it's because uh, Belichick found things that he could do, like, you know, punt return, right? Uh-huh. Or do this, do that, and kind of just th- the little pieces. And, you know, uh, Coombs was basically the type of coach I, I feel like would do something like that, would find out what you're really good at. And make you you know showcase it you know yeah and you know a lot of these guys after they play collegiate baseball this is it for them you know i mean they go off they graduate they get their degree and they do whatever their major was and this is just kind of like you know something to do while they're in college they were really good at or like something like to you know as a scholarship or whatever right but like the things you remember in life especially in team sports which i think are very important i think everyone should play a team sport at least once in their life because it's not all about you. You know what I mean? It's about the team. What what can you do to help the team, right? Maybe you're not carrying the team on your shoulders, but it's the little teeny things you could do that help, right? You know, whether it's, uh, you know, you're able to just get on base, right? Or you yeah. pinch run for something, right? Or maybe you just get that 
that key out, you know, you catch that ball that you ball hasn't been hitting to you all night, but you finally caught that ball and I ended the end and that got you into the next stuff. So having a that's coach, how, that's how championships are won, my friend. Absolutely. You know, stolen base here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I Remember this team back in 04, right? That yeah, happened right? Over there, right? Yep. So something like that but look these like as a as a player you remember like the coaches that kind of set you on a track and made you think remember or learn things that you uh will take with you in your professional life outside of baseball and i I think uh mike coombs was a coach like that who he would would as he brought you up you'd always remember him and um there were stories like he was getting thrown out of games all the time so from the, from, <laughs> from the uh from the uh trivia video, apparently he was he, he would he would be very passionate about something, and he would go out there and let the umpires know about it, and he wouldn't care because he was dead on. This is the way it should. It's you you did it wrong, kind of thing, you know. Which is great because I, I am big on coaches defending their players, and going out there and you know yelling at the umpires, if, especially if the umpires are wrong at something, right? Yeah. I mean, team first, whether or not they're you should be doing that. Is debatable, but I think it's part of the sport. I think it's you know it almost never gets turned around, right? I mean that's why they invented the coaches' challenge in the, the big leagues, right? So it's like, but it's the point. If I seen someone going out there and risking getting tossed out of a game for something, you know that you know maybe I was safe, maybe I wasn't safe on first, right? But they they you know they 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 got my back. There's a lot of respect oh, yeah. that goes behind something yeah, like that. Some coaches will intentionally do that just to try to ignite a spark. They'll yeah. get themselves ejected just per- on purpose. You know, there was an interesting thing about in the tribute video about how many games that he, if the games that he was kicked out that he, they either won the game or they it was a, a tried it was a pivotal point of the season which mm-hmm. changed the momentum of everything because he was so gung ho about it too, which I think is pretty really cool. And um, as we you know, we talked to him. Uh, there was this one story um, about the Dunkin' Donuts Cup. Did, did you did did you hear about this one? No, I did not. No. So one of the teams they were playing, it was I feel like it. I don't know the exact team, but it was like the other Rhode Island team that's in the league, and they had this thing every year, which is the Dunkin' Donuts Cup. And if you won this particular game of the season, it was sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts. There was a little trophy that's a Dunkin' Donuts Cup and everything. It was like the, you know it, this team played a different team every year, and whoever won won the Dunkin' Donuts Cup, and. Uh, 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 coach was like, "Yeah, I don't really don't care about." This. It was the pregame show. They were like talking to him about it. He's like, "Yeah, I really don't care about the uh, <laughs> Let's go. I just want to win the championship uh, this season." You know what I mean, kind of thing. And um, they were in the tribute video. They were going back and forth uh, with some people who you know he he worked with over the past with the girls, and they actually found the Duncan Owens Cup. And I gotta I gotta know if they actually brought it to the. Uh, the ceremony I thought and gave it to him because they I guess they blew the dust off and they found it in the archives of the stadium somewhere. Just pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but um yeah, I just you know, I think we might have maybe only give you a couple of those two tonight and then we'll we'll have plenty to talk to over the course of the weeks. But um Yeah, well and then next you know next week we can come back to grab another two and we'll talk about them. Yeah. I just don't want to rush through these because I, I I just reading the stories and watching the videos and kind of diving deep into it. There's just like, there's, there's too much to yeah, kind of blow I, by. Right. I'm looking forward to getting to some of these players here after reading a lot and uh, seeing some stuff on them on online. So I'm, I'm, I'm pumped actually about that. Yeah. I mean, some of these plays, I think we might be able to spend a whole episode on. Cause yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Mike, Mike Appel, right. We were talking about yes. him a couple weeks ago. I, I'm very psyched to talk uh, about him actually. So we'll, very uh, interesting story. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gonna so over the course of the week, uh, over the course of the month of the episodes and stuff like that, we're gonna just gonna highlight all this until the season gets. We're gonna try to get some plays going on here. So um I think um I think we covered pretty in depth two of the uh seven guys who were brought in on Friday. Yeah. And uh which is great. And I, we like I said, we already talked to Coach. I'd love to talk to Nick and uh I really wanna know the whole how it all went down because I think that's pretty pretty impressive at the end of the day. Same. You know, what I mean, Same. like it's you imagine like I I I mean I've always had that idea to do something like that, but I at least I never had enough like momentum to kind of. But see, you had it to do with the idea of something that you already love and were into. That's why I'm like more fascinated by like he didn't know anything about baseball, so why mm-hmm. why did was it this? That's that's what I'm right. more hung up on here. You know, 
And I love to know the, the amount of baseball he did know prior to that. Like it was, if it was like, a, if it was something like he was a casual um, yeah. spectator, maybe, or it was like maybe he really liked the idea of baseball and just wanted to learn more about it. Like that, all that's all that stuff would be really, really cool to find out. Um, so we're working on that. We're gonna get this here. We're in a slow roll here, but we already got we launched our first episode last Wednesday. Uh, of course, you guys all seen it on. Uh, well, I guess we're three or four weeks advanced. So the first episode was launched um, on the 15th of February. So uh, catch us every Wednesday at noon. It's a new watch episode. It. So watch it. Um, Adam, would you like to add anything? Anywhere anyone could reach you no. if they'd like to ask you a personal question. Watch it. Leave a comment. Just leave it on YouTube, wherever it is. I'll That's read it. it. We'll That's find all you it. you got to do. We'll find right. it. Make it that simple. No need to stretch this out to other things. You leave it right there on YouTube, and I will see it, and I will answer it. Leave right your social there. security number, maybe uh, the name of your... <laughs> Any information we could use that could help you with this. You know, we're just really trying to, you know, really want to dive deep on anything. But, um, yeah, as simple as that. Just uh, leave a comment. If you have anything you want to ask personally about Adam and I, let us know. If there's anything about the team, let us know, and we can go from there. But um, we'll leave it at that for this week. Uh, a little cliffhanger for uh, next week episode. Maybe we can get uh, Mike to come on. He could probably, maybe he probably keep talking about the plays even better than uh, we yeah. can too. So, which would be really cool. So, Adam, anything you want to add before we uh, sign off for the night? That's that's all I got, my friend. All right, and uh, that's all I got too. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. As always, Adam Mellet over there, and uh, I am Adi eighty four, and we will see you guys next week. Have a good week. Later. Thank you.